Hi, all uh, you woman haters. Um, I'm Girl Writes What, and uh, I have yet another troll in my comments uh, telling me things like if uh, if I was living with any of my audience, uh, they would be beating me and uh, and refusing to let me talk and all kinds of ridiculous things like that, and and it just. It just reminded me of, uh, of all of the people who have um, said to me that they're able to get behind some or even many of the causes championed by the men's rights movement, but they've been essentially scared off or, uh, or, or, or put off by the anger and misogyny and aggression and generalizations of women or generalizations of feminists uh, that, that are found often in men's spaces. And uh, I think it's probably every other week that someone posts in Our Men's Rights on Reddit that if only the gang would just tone down the language, stop being so accusatory towards feminism, stop generalizing women, they'd be a lot more comfortable there. And and what what I find the most frustrating about this is that any kind of political movement, any kind of movement toward uh, justice, it, it really isn't there to make people feel comfortable. Uh, when people feel comfortable, they stop thinking. Uh, they, If we were all comfortable, then why would anybody need to change anything? Um, it's usually only when people start to get be made uncomfortable that they will actually get off their ass and do something uh, to change whatever it is that's making them uncomfortable. And the people that want to make changes, it's in their best interest to make other people uncomfortable with the status quo. So, this squeamishness just really, uh, I just don't get it. Uh, it. It seems ridiculous to me. When people's rights are being violated, when they're being marginalized, you can expect them to get mad and to express that. Moving on. Uh, I'm just going to illustrate an example of this kind of, uh, of hand-wringing and pearl-clutching and, you know, retreating to my fainting couch that seems to happen whenever there's any kind of uh, unpleasant sentiment coming from men. Popular online feminist vlogger Jessica Valenti, and this isn't a new video, but it's one that was uh, brought to my attention fairly recently. Um, she's giving an interview and, and giving her estimation of the MRA community online and in it she sort of tries to portray it as some festering, oozing, pathogenic ulcer of misogynistic sentiment and hateful anti-feminism and, and from the histrionics and accusations of, of this recent commenter on my channel as to, uh, and, and screaming, oh I'm threatened, I'm threatened when, I, like, people aren't even swearing at her um, I'm pretty sure Ms. Valenti isn't alone in her impression. I'm just going to let you guys watch that video. It's only a couple minutes long. And, and then you can come back and, and we, can, we can just discuss it. Um, I can't say that I was shocked. Uh, or even disappointed. Um, I, I think it's fair to say I rolled my eyes so hard at her desperation to connect the MRM in any possible way, no matter how flimsy or absurd, with misogynistic violence and hate, I, I might have actually sprained my eyeballs. I, I just I can't be sure whether Ms. Valenti actually feels so threatened by any expression of maleness that does not comply with the drawing room decorum demanded by feminists. That is, Maleness that is what it is and doesn't follow the rules that women set. Uh, that, that she hide herself to her fainting couch before learning one single thing about the men's community online, or whether she actually knows all about it and is just deliberately smearing the movement with the flimsiest of accusations, hoping that if she paints us all in a poor enough light, no one will bother to actually go and check and see whether she knows what the fuck she's talking about. Neither possibility really reflects well on her or on others who agree with her. Number one, ignorance. Uh, she conflates anti-feminism with misogyny, uh, which the two, the two are completely different animals, no matter how much feminists want to define them as identical. 
They are not the same. And in the very next breath, she conflates the men's rights movement with the game community, otherwise known as pickup artists. I'm going to call them PUA. And, uh, and a little background on the MRA PUA thing for those of you who might be new to, uh, to the online men's community. Both movements are based, at least in part, uh, on an acceptance of the empirically supported biological reality of gender differences in behavior and psychology. Uh, both mu movements recognize the system we currently have in place, largely due to rampant and unchecked feminist advocacy acting in concert with traditional white knighting, is kind of fucked up. And, and that's really where they part ways. Uh, MRAs want to fix the system, or create a new one based on real equality. PUAs either think the system is broken beyond repair, or, or they really don't care to fix it. After all, if they fixed it, they wouldn't be able to exploit and capitalize on all the openings provided by its fucked upness in their endless quest for low-cost fun and poon. MRAs often characterize PUAs as pussy worshippers, while PUAs disdain MRAs as pointless and counterproductive beta grovelers who could be milking the broken system for all it's worth if they just get the right attitudes and decent clothes and stop whining. There's a fair amount of crossover as far as each being interested in some of the writings and activities on the other side, but to conflate the two and lump them into one big bag of male discontent is, is kind of... It's like claiming fundamentalist Islam is the same as Buddhism because both are based on spirituality. It, it just really is, is not... Uh, it, it, it has no basis in reality. So to recap... PUAs are happy with the status quo, and even if they see a collapse coming, they're happy to fuck and drink and carouse all they can while it falls apart. MRAs are actually trying to prevent said collapse. Now, these kind of distinctions are important because of the fact that unless someone like Valenti can connect the MRA and the PUA communities into some kind of cohesive organism with a common purpose, then she can't say things like this. George Sedini, the man who shot those women at a gym in Pennsylvania not too long ago this past year, was kind of peripherally involved with some of them online in the context of a discussion of the MRM. Can you tell I really hate her voice? Because, you know, I looked for quite a while and the only connection I could find between Sedini and the men's community online is the fact that he attended a seminar on how to be more successful with women. I'm assuming he was there to learn game. And uh, you can be sure, if someone like Valenti had something more concrete, she wouldn't have been circumspect enough to say, peripherally involved. She'd have named names and told the camera exactly where and with whom online this guy was hanging out. So there it is. A single seminar on how to learn game to be more successful with women. That is George Sedini's connection to the men's community online. So here's a guy who's arguably been slowly going crazy for a long time, who hasn't been laid in about 20 years, who happens to attend <clears throat> a single pickup artist seminar in the months before he finally flips his nut and shoots a bunch of women. And this is indicative, according to Valenti of the misogyny in the men's rights movement. And this is how she can rationalize her way into saying something like, So, I do think that kind of paying attention to the misogyny and the anti-feminism that's happening online, and the way that these men are bolstering each other and supporting each other in really violent views about women, it's something important that we need to pay attention to. Blah, blah, hateful toward women, danger, blah, 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 violent misogyny, violent views, blah, blah, hate women, blah, blah, no accountability online, blah, 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 want to kill women, blah, blah, place where people are like, yeah, me too. And she can say all of that and frame it within the context of a discussion of the men's rights movement. Because George Sedini attended a pickup artist seminar Sometime before he went off his rocker, he is now one of us. We are now responsible for him. Now, 
There was a lot of discussion in men's communities online about Sedini, and the very worst of it was pretty bad, but largely, if not entirely, confined to the comment sections of various blog posts, most of which occurred in the pickup artist community. A community of social nihilists, mind you, who look down their noses at the MRM for trying to fix the system that provides them with all that cut-rate pussy. A few of those commenters praised him overtly or in some kind of roundabout way, but most of the comments were of the canary in the coal mine sort, the kind you might see when a woman does something awful and people believe they know why, and then discuss the systemic problems that might lead to more people doing more horrible things of that nature for the same systemic reasons. In other words, most of the discussion revolved around how the system marginalizes men and how we can fix the system so that we don't end up with more George Sedinis. Right or wrong, Sedini felt that our feminist society had cheated him out of any kind of normal or decent life. A lot of people in the MRM feel the same way to one degree or another. So I'm going to repeat this. Most of the examination of Sedini within the men's rights community was about how society can change so we don't get more Sedinis. But it seems that the fact that men were even discussing it in the larger context of systemic discrimination against men, rather than simply condemning Sedini as a monster and then shutting the fuck up, this is a clear sign to feminists like Valenti and other hand ringers and pearl clutchers that MRAs hate women and have violent views about women. Despite the fact that on virtually every MRA blog I've ever been on, any kind of incitement to violent action, either against isolated women, or all women, or against the system, is swiftly and sternly rebuffed, and those commenters booted. And even though MRAs want to fix the system, that creates men like Sedini. Even with all of that, it must have been MRAs who brainwashed Sedini into hating women enough to kill a bunch of them. And oh, noble Jessica, and noble, noble feminism, the movement that is benign and peaceful and has everyone's best interests at heart are crying a warning about how dangerous we are. So, I was just thinking it might be useful to examine another famous shooter, one who went by the name of Valerie Solanus. For those of you who don't know, Solanus is the feminist author of the infamous Scum Manifesto whom many feminists, feminists today have tried to characterize as a satirical work which is yet more revisionist history right there, but I'll get to that in a minute. Another feminist told me just the other day that it was, at its heart, entirely nihilistic, calling for the end of humanity altogether. Now, I found that really interesting since the manifesto actually calls for the systemic extermination of the male sex through violent rebellion on the part of women, after which said women could live the rest of their lives in peace, at which point why would any of them want to burden themselves with children? To conclude that the main point of the manifesto was some sort of egalitarian vision of nihilism with respect to humanity as a whole is basically equating the genocidal murder of males with the free choice on the part of women to not spoil their male-free utopian existence by having children. Solanus's other claim to fame was as the person who shot and nearly killed Andy Warhol. She actually attempted to kill three men that day. She shot Warhol and art maven Mario Amaya, an associate of Warhol's, and then put the gun against the head of Warhol's manager, Fred Hughes, at which point the gun jammed. If the gun hadn't jammed, I really don't see any reason to believe that three men would not have died that day. Not as well known to most is the fact that Warhol wasn't even the man Solanus had set out to kill that day. Her intended target was her publisher, Maurice Gerodias, or Gerodias, uh, whom she felt had wronged her. As a condition of him publishing the Scum Manifesto through Olympia Press, which he owned, he'd required her to give him the right of first refusal on all her future work. Uh, this is like a common clause in publishing contracts, and it just stipulates that the author will bring all future or all related work to that publisher first, at which point the publisher can offer for it or decline and the author can accept the offer or negotiate better terms or decline altogether and offer it elsewhere. Um, it really does not give up any kind of control over an author's work. It just slows them down uh, as far as offering it elsewhere. Now, Ms. Solanus took this agreement to mean that Gerodia now owned the copyright to all her future works. Um, 
I mean, if the redundant and meandering and incoherent drivel of the manifesto itself isn't indicative of enough of this woman's level of crazy and stupid, the fact that she never bothered to ask anyone what that agreement meant, either before complying with it or after, or indeed before setting out to kill because of it, that should be evidence enough of some serious deficiencies on her part. Now, when Solanus went looking for Gerodia, he wasn't at his office. For whatever reason, she decided Warhol would be a suitable stand-in to vent her spleen at men, and claimed to police at her hear and at her hearing that Warhol, who had done nothing more than give her a couple of bit parts in two of his movies, had too much control in her life. Uh, she said he had her tied up lock, stock, and barrel, and was going to do something to her that would have ruined her. Um, so she's clearly, clearly delusional. At her hearing, she insisted she was right in what she did and had nothing to regret. Um, after some very much needed stints uh, in Bellevue Hospital for psychiatric evaluation, she pled guilty to reckless assault with attempt to harm and was sentenced to three years. She was reported at that time to be dedicating the remainder of her life to the avowed purpose of eliminating every single male from the face of the earth. And though she was aware of the feminist movement at the time, she considered them a uh, civil disobedience luncheon club. So, in essence, even the most radical second waivers weren't radical enough for Sol Solanus. Uh, they might hate men, they might want to liberate themselves completely from men, but they weren't prepared to eliminate all males from the face of the earth, at least not yet. So Solanus really had no time or patience for them. They were me merely playing at being feminists. But as much as Solanus couldn't be bothered to associate herself with the radical but not radical enough feminists of the day, those feminists practically jumped at the chance to associate themselves with her once she flipped her nut and pulled a Sedini. Robin Morgan, a prolific feminist author who eventually became editor of Ms. Magazine, the most influential feminist rag there is, joined demonstrators demanding Solanus's release from prison. Tigrace Atkinson, feminist author and then president of the New York chapter of Now, praised Solanus as the first outstanding champion of women's rights. Florence Kennedy, a lawyer and active member of Now who went on to found the Feminist Party and the Women's Political Caucus, called her one of the most important spokeswomen of the feminist movement. Wow. So if a few comments on pickup blogs sympathetic to George Sedini is a sign that the men's rights community online is filled with misogyny and violence, what does the fact that prominent feminist writers and thinkers beatified Valerie Solanus say about misandry within feminism? And it's not like I have to go that far back in history to find feminists glorifying violence against men and pedestalizing the women who commit it. Lorena Bobbitt, whose initial statement to police, according to the New York Times, was, he always have orgasm and he doesn't wait for me to have orgasm. He's selfish. I don't think it's fair, so I pulled back the sheets and then I did it. She was hailed as a national folk hero an obviously terrorized battered woman striking back at her oppressor. Never mind that there was plenty of evidence of reciprocal violence in that relationship. Never mind that he was in the process of leaving her, and that they'd been discussing a divorce. The feminist narrative reared its ugly head before any of the details were known, and the case was crammed into that model in the public consciousness, complete with a rape accusation that could not be proven in a court of law, and a story that repeatedly changed gears, from Bobbitt's initial statement onward to fit the dogma of a domineering abusive husband and terrified cowed wife. Before she'd even cried abuse, the feminists of North America picked her up on their shoulders, a display of sisterly solidarity with a violent offender that culminated in carnival-style demonstrations outside the courtroom, including the dispensing of cocktail wieners slathered in ketchup, t-shirts extolling the sweet virtues of revenge, and feminists selling buttons nominating Lorena Bobbitt for Surgeon General. Mainstream magazines hailed her as a feminist heroine, and perhaps most disturbing, a major feminist group in Ecuador, Bobbitt's home country, not only bankrolled her defense, but threatened to castrate a hundred innocent American men if she went to prison for mutilating her husband. Now, I don't see any misandry in any of that, or any kind of violent sentiment, or even terrorist leanings, at all. Do you? No. 
I mean, feminists must be super aware of uh, hatred and violence and terrorism, since I've been warned by well-meaning feminists that supporting men who go their own way is an act of terrorism, because MRAs sometimes use harsh or colorful language when discussing the subject. So I'm sure the vast majority of prominent feminists loudly and firmly condemned that group in Ecuador for the terrorists they are, and admonished the movement as a whole for associating with such groups. Oh wait, never mind. And anyway, even as recently as a couple of months ago, the very same danger Ms. Valenti claims runs rampant within the men's community online, uh, the danger that because there's no accountability online the same way there is in real life, uh, that you can say you want to kill people and get away with it and find other people who are like-minded, well, that kind of raised its head in the feminist community. Uh, a little corner of the feminist universe called Radical Hub and some of the lovely, lovely, lovely quotes that were dug up there. Uh, a feminist childcare worker speaking about the boys in her care. I honestly have been reassessing the fact that I am giving care to these little future rapists. I know it is kind of going against my principles to support and care for these little fuckers. A feminist web developer. I'm one of those bad, shameful feminists who wish we could just kill all the fuckers, whether it's a practical tack to take or not. A feminist and fellow Canuck. Females don't have to kill baby boys, just not nurture them. Females are forced to birth baby boys, but beyond that, a female's physical actions are her own. Males will die without the constant infusion of female energy and they, that they get from our wombs and from our lives. Females need not be emotionally and intellectually invested in a male future. Or uh, a UK feminist lobbyist. It needs to be so unfashionable to have boys, and then they would be aborted before seeing the light of day. Violent revolution is the only answer. And feminist and best-selling novelist. Uh, your proposal to exterminate the male entirely a la Solanus is, to me, more of a last resort. Now, these aren't random, unemployed internet kooks who live on Cheetos and haven't seen the sun in years. Uh, they're lobbyists, community development coordinators. They work for arts councils and chambers of commerce. They teach special ed and care for children. They're lawyers and best-selling authors. These are not basement-dwelling losers, people. They're respectable women with jobs that involve the public trust. Other contributors to Radical Hub include noted feminists like Julie Bindle and Sheila Jeffries. So I'm starting to wonder just how atrociously a feminist or large numbers of feminists would have to behave in order for others in that movement to accept the kind of guilt by association that they're so quick to apply to the MRA and men like George Sedini, whose association with the MRM consisted of attending one seminar on how to pick up women. I really fail to understand how Paul Elam saying men going their own way is fucking feminist shit up qualifies as terrorism in the MRM, while a publicized threat called into several media outlets to sever the penises of a hundred random American men if a violent women, woman spent a night in prison wasn't enough, to so much as dampen the carnival atmosphere and the feminist glee outside of the courthouse at Lorena Bobbitt's trial. I really don't understand how feminists can now rewrite history and claim the Scum Manifesto was a work of satire, when not only did its author take it to its logical conclusion on a small scale, but other feminists of the day, who have since risen to prominence, lauded her violent and murderous actions as that of a feminist champion. Seriously. What the fuck is going on? You put a monster in some strappy sandals and lipstick and suddenly it's not a monster anymore but a hero? Or harmless? I just don't get it. And at the same time, the moment a man gets angry or speaks passionately, as a man, everyone's ducking and covering because some lunatic who shot a bunch of women made some of the same criticisms of the system that influence all, influences all our lives and attended a single seminar on how to pick up women. I, I just, I, I don't get it. I don't. It's, it's ridiculous. I feel like I'm living in a parallel universe. I feel 
Like every single time I talk to feminists about this issue, I'm having an out-of-body experience. That is how bizarre their minds seem to work. I, 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 I'm starting to think that the psychiatric community needs to include feminism in their big compendium of mental disorders because this is, it, it seems to be based entirely on delusion. So I just, yeah. Anyhow, that is all I have to say to the uh, reactionary, panicky, pathetic coward in my comments who claims that all of you guys would be beating me up if, uh, if we were in the same room because you hate women. And, uh, and I guess I will uh, see you all another day.